Hey everybody, Steve from the Pinball Room, and today we're sitting back down in my coding chair. As you probably know by now, this means we're not working on the physical machine today. We're gonna go through and do some coding, which you also probably knew by the name of the video. But anyway, we're gonna jump into, into some coding. I've been working on my play field on the clear coat. That is in progress. Video to come very soon, but it's taken a number of days. I was doing it horribly wrong the first time, so it's taking me longer. So in the meantime, while what I think is my final um, clear coat, coat curing up in the garage, um, we're gonna go through and work some more on some code, all right? And I had this amazing day yesterday. It was like best day ever. I said, I'm gonna sit down and figure out how to code some mode selection through a carousel. Just like Star Trek Stern, um, the Stern Star Trek where you sit down, you know, you have to pick a mission, right? You're gonna destroy the drill. Are you gonna do like the Klingon battle? Or you, you know, what, what's your mission you're gonna be, right? And you have to like sit there and you, and you pick one, you move up and down with the flipper buttons. Then it starts. Well, for my Led Zeppelin pinball machine, I wanna do the same basic thing, right? I'm trying to keep my game pretty basic for the code because I'm not a coder. And just to keep it really simple and fun to understand. And so it's a music pin. So I want you to pick a song. I do want the song to be the mode as you have different shots for different songs. And so what's the first thing you need to do as a player? And you're gonna come up to the machine, you're gonna hit the start button, and then I want you to pick a song. So let's figure out how to code that whole thing to pick a song. Why not, right? Seems like a logical place to start. Okay, so we're just gonna dive into that today. That's what we're gonna go through and, and cover. Now, first things first, before you get started doing this video, if you're just watching for fun because you like to hear me yap about my project, great. You're ready to go. you got everything you need to do. Just get a bowl of popcorn and try to follow the mental leaps I'm making here. If you're trying to follow along and actually use this as a more instructional guide for you, okay, a couple things I'm going to highly recommend you do first, okay? If you have not gone through and completed the Mission Pinball Framework tutorial for your game, you really need to do that, okay? Everything we're going to play around with today requires all that base amount of config files and setup going. If you cannot push the start button either virtually on, virtually on your laptop, right? Or in your physical game, you cannot push the start button and have it start up and kick a ball into that shooter lane, let you plunge and even just recognize, you know, through a single switch hit that the ball's out there. Like you've got a little more work to do. Okay. I'm just sorry. That's the truth. You're, you're going to really want to go through and finish that tutorial. Okay. Now, once you finish that tutorial, you will go through and you'll be at a point, if you remember at the end of the tutorial, you'll have gone through, you'll have learned a little bit about some basic lighting stuff. You may or may not even have your lights hooked up, like my lights are still not hooked up yet, right? Um, and you may or may not have really gone through and done the attract show, but if you've followed just the basic things, you'll have the ability to start up your machine, push that start button and get a ball into the shooter lane, right? You'll have a little screen that says like player one and zero zero for the score, right? Perfect, that's all you need. Just get to that point. At that point, your game now has what's considered a base mode. And modes is a very heavily used term here. I think we've talked about it in a couple of videos already. I'm gonna talk about it again for a minute, right? So let's talk about modes for a second. Modes are like, I don't wanna say the core of MPF, but man, they are one of the core things, at least with how much I've scratched the surface so far, I'm seeing they're gonna be used freaking everywhere, all right? You've got the player visible modes, right? A game mode, I started a multi-ball mode, I've started this song mode, right? But then you've got so many other things that are happening that the player doesn't really understand what's going on or how you're doing it in the code, and they're all being driven by dozens of other smaller little sub-modes, right? Anyway, so modes are important. So to that point, let's go here to the MPF docs, all right? And we're gonna go to the section, we, we're done with tutorial, we're going inside the manual to game design, okay? And I'm also going to highly recommend, before you try to jump in and do what we're doing today, that you watch two of these videos. The Structure in Your Pinball Game, an amazing video that Jan put out. He's got a lot of great videos. This one does a really good job just helping you understand the basic structure for a game and how different modes and sub-modes and things are all gonna kinda work together. So if you haven't watched that part, watch this video. It'll be very helpful. Okay, the State Machines one, it's very helpful to watch. It's not very long. I think it could be good for you. We're not using a State Machine for what we're handling today. So if you want to, you can skip that one. I think you'll be all right. The next one though, Advents and Handlers and Pinball Games. This one might seem a little heavy at first. It did to me. I've watched it a couple times now. But events are another core concept you need to understand for Mission Pinball Framework. And specifically for what we're covering today, if I did not have at least a little bit of understanding of events, I would not have been able to kind of have a couple of these aha moments, which I did, which was so exciting. I got this stuff working, but it relied on me being able to understand a little bit about events and how they work and how to call them and how to watch for them. So yeah, watch that video also, okay? It's worth it, okay? They're gonna be super helpful, okay? You also, let's let's go through and let's read this section about game design, okay? 
this whole section is big. There's a lot to it. You don't need to go through and read the whole section about like wizard mode and ball end mode and game end modes. Let's not worry about those right now or even layering modes, okay? But the initial part, let's go through and just kind of talk about um, what game modes are. Let's read that section. And then let's come back and let's read mode selection, okay? Because mode selection is where we're going to focus today, okay? We're going to be picking a mode using a, what's called a carousel. So we jump in here now. Actually, before we do that, one last word of advice. This is from Anthony Van Winkle, one of the um, great contributors to the Mission Pinball Framework also. He's created a Mass Effect game. He's created lots of games. He's, this guy just codes games like nobody's business. Um, super smart guy. He's the guy that helped me get my stepper motor working. He kind of created the code so I could use the stepper motor the way I wanted. Anyway, thank you, Anthony. You are just amazing. Okay, so he said something in our Slack channel the other day that I copied in here. I want to read to you guys because I think it's super, super helpful. Um, some good advice. A general approach to game design, okay? Start with just the basic tutorial and let's just start working on a single player game. Don't worry about adding in the ability to add in multiple players yet, okay? Just hold off on that for right now. Focus on a single player game. Don't worry about any special options, any special customizations yet. Just get it through the tutorial where you can get into the main game. You can hit the start button. The ball goes into the shooter lane. You can plunge it, okay? He says, you know, maybe go through, get some lights flashing to identify a couple different shots inside that base mode, which is that last mode you did as part of the tutorial, right? You can get a couple of shots in there, identify a little bit, a couple of scoring profiles for a couple of things. Um, then maybe add in some music and a couple of sound effects when you hit certain shots, right? Just Let's just start doing some simple basic things all the way around, slowly flushing out a very, very simple game. He said, then go through, add in your scoring, maybe figure out your bonus, then go through and add a mode that will start during the game, then maybe another mode and start building on top of each other. Then once you kind of got some modes, then worry about a multiplayer, then maybe worry about multi-ball, um, then maybe get to like a wizard mode. Um, and then you start thinking about like accruals and character pickers and achievements and all these other things. So I'm not following that exactly to the T, but the logic I am following, meaning I'm trying to keep it really simple. Like I've mapped out inside my fig jam file. Now, if you remember, I had gone through and in order to really feel confident about the play field that I'm clear coding, right? And the inserts I have, do I really have all the inserts I need? I realized about a month ago, I really needed to stop and sit down. I had thought through a lot of different ideas for my game modes, the multi balls, um, the type of bonus structure I want to have, some things like that. And I want to make sure I had that solid just conceptually, like writing it out on paper in a spreadsheet, um, on some slides, whatever. I just kind of copied down notes inside here. I wanted to make sure that I had a general like flow for my game, like a flow chart of things, right? How do you start this mode? What are the objectives of that mode? Okay, a couple of them. How's that going to work? So I went through and I came up with examples and I started taking all these notes down here, right? Of the different modes, sample modes for a song, how you're going to work through that, you know, um, different ideas for my multi balls how my lower standups are going to work. What are they, what are they used for what about the upper play field? What am I using my middle flipper for, you know, um, anyways, my hurry ups. I tried to figure all that out to make sure that everything I wanted was accounted for in my inserts. So again, like I couldn't really be final with my inserts until I kind of figured out some game logic. Well, let's not try to go through and jump right in and code this really cool wizard mode we have in our mind until we've even got just like the basic modes running. Okay, because it's just it's going to be more difficult and more problematic. So let's building blocks is the way I kind of took what Anthony was saying, right? Start with something simple. Let's just get a game playing. All right. And now let's, you know, maybe add some lights. Okay, let's add a sound effect. Let's kind of learn these basic things. Now let's add a mode. And now within the mode, we know how to add a sound effect for that mode specifically your lights for that specific mode. Okay, so that's kind of the general process that I would recommend you take building blocks. All right, enough of that. Let's get back to it. For me, I said, okay, the crux of my machine for a Led Zeppelin, a music pinball machine, um, the next core thing really is for a player to pick their song. Like I said, kind of like a la Star Trek, right? So how do we do that? Okay, back into the docs. So we're inside game design. Now let's read through mode selection. If you read through all this, which you really should, there's primarily two different ways you can start a mode inside a pinball machine, right? There might be a third, but I think they're pretty accurate. I can't really think of a third, but it's basically you're either hitting a shot to start a mode, like hit the ramp shot five times or hit this combo and then whoop, you're ready to start a mode, right? So maybe you have to hit some shots to qualify a mode, right? Like to light the thing, right? And then you hit another shot then, okay, you've hit the ramp five times. 
Now hit this shot over here, and now this mode starts, right? So you're either like hitting shots, a combination or a series of shots to start a mode, or the ball's being held somewhere, like you shoot the scoop, like in Guardians of the Galaxy, and then while this ball's being held in there, then the screen comes up and says, hey, you know, pick a character. Or, you know, Star Trek, before you even start the ball, you hit start, the ball goes in the shooter lane, and then you've got to pick your mode, right? Pick your mission. If you just plunge, it's going to auto-pick the whatever one's highlighted, right? So those are kind of the two ways. You either are like hitting something physically, or the ball pretty much is being held somewhere, and then through the UI, through the screen, and through your flipper buttons, you're going to pick a mode, right? So that second one of having the ball being held and like you're like clicking through screens, it's basically a carousel, right? You're kind of like cycling through a set of things, right? So that's what I want to do for my song mode, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Enough of all this preamble. We're at the point. We're all set. We're ready to go. So how to go through and um, code a carousel mode. Again, this is a mode. It's not like a game mode, but it's a mode to pick a mode. So again, we're using modes all over the place, all right? So how do we do that? Well, if we read through this here, we can scroll down to the example of select mode and start by shot. Okay, there's different options to do this. First one is basically called using a carousel. Now they even give us some, a little snippet of basic code here. So the very first thing I want us to do is we're going to go through and we're going to copy this code snippet they gave us, this example. We're going to go to our code editor and instead of new file, we're just going to paste that in. All right. And we're going to save this as carousel.yaml. And we're going to go here inside our machine folder and we're going to go into our modes and we're going to create a new folder called carousel and then inside there we're going to create a folder called config and that's where we're going to save this file bingo okay so now we see here inside modes we have a mode called carousel inside that config we have carousel.yaml again similar to what we did for base we had our base YAML inside of config, right? Okay, now we got carousel. Now we need to go back to our main config file inside our modes and we need to add an entry for a mode called carousel. Okay, and I'm going to go through and hurry and hide out these other ones right now. Okay. So we've added carousel as an active mode to our main config file. So the MPF will recognize it. And then here's the start of carousel. Now, are we done? Is that all the code we need? Unfortunately, I found out, no, this by itself is missing stuff. <laughs> it's not going to work hundred percent, but it gives us, it gives us a good starting point. Okay. So how do we know this works or not? Well, let's go to our terminal. Okay. And let's go to our um, MPF folder. And let's just see what that code does so far. All right, now I wanna start up too. I wanna start up my, my MPF monitor. Let's get that going in a window because I found out MPF monitor is gonna be very, very helpful in a lot of things, okay? Get our play field window, our mode window. I want our event window going also. The event window is gonna be very important for us here, okay? And now, Let's start a new terminal and let's get to our machine folder again. And let's just try to run what we have right now with carousel set up the way it is. And let's just see what happens. Okay. What? There's an error. What's it showing here? There's an error found in carousel version mismatch. Config version five. Let's try that again. Okay. So the way the code was having, there we go. It's starting. Let's come back here. The, the code snippet has up here, this commented out thing, a mode carousel. MPF doesn't like that anymore. You need to have your config at the very top. That's what the issue was, all right? So I switched, I switched those around, restarted, and now we're running. Look, my attract mode's going. Da -da. Now I'm going to resize this screen, this monitor, because my main display is hiding everything else. Going to resize it down. Okay, and that way over here on the left, look at this, events. 
in my event window, I can see all the events that are moving on. Look, slide, last game score, slide active, last game. Slide, awesome slide, <laughs> active, last game score. It's just those two. It's being created, active, it's being removed. Created. That's all that's going on. Now, if I hit the S button to start my game, it started. I hear the music, but there's no carousel. Nothing happened. Why did nothing happen? Well, let's look at our code here for carousel mode. All right, mode start events. Does this sound familiar to you guys? When we did the base mode through the, through the tutorial, they had us put in the section called mode, start events, ball starting, priority 100. Meaning when the event of ball starting happened, that's going to start the base mode. Okay, so MPF automatically did ball starting. Once we hit the start button, it triggered this ball starting event which our code was looking for. Once it saw it, then it started our base mode and now it's gonna do the slide and everything. Well, carousel is looking for start selection mode. This is not just a basic core mode that MPF does by itself. We have to cause that event to fire and carousel, the carousel code will watch for it. And if it does see it, then it will start the carousel mode. Well, right now nothing's firing that. Okay, does that make sense? So we're going to go through and figure out, okay, at what point do we want to trigger that event and then the code will fire that event, and then Carousel will see it, and then it will start up. Okay, well for me, I want that to start at the very beginning of my game. As soon as someone hits the start button, I want it to start up. So right now I hit the start button, and my base mode starts. So I can go inside my base mode, and inside an event player, right? We have a slide player that plays slides. We also have an event player that will play events. Hopefully you got that through that event video. We can come here inside, we can add a section called event player, okay? When do we want to play an event? Well, when this mode has started, that's gonna be our trigger. Then we want to spit out an event called whatever. Well, I've got one already called start mode stairs because I was playing around with my whole staircase thing, right? That Anthony helped me on. But now let's add one called start selection mode. Why start selection mode? Because that's what our little code snippet says it's looking for. So we're just gonna copy that and throw that inside here. So now, basically this is gonna cause for both modes to be happening at once concurrently. We'll have our base mode going once the base mode starts, it's gonna throw out this event called start selection mode. Carousel is gonna be watching for that. When it sees it, then it's gonna start. So now we'll have the base mode and the carousel mode started. So I might wanna add a priority to this and say I want this to be maybe 110. So it's higher than my base mode of 100. Just to make sure that whatever I want it doing is not gonna get overwritten by something inside the base mode. Okay, so I'm gonna do it like one notch higher, okay? Now that's gonna start the mode. What's gonna stop the mode? Carousel item selected. So our mode here itself at some point needs to spit out an event called carousel item selected. Um, I don't see anything that's gonna do that automatically, but we'll, let, let's run it and let's see what happens. Okay, this next thing here is code. Now, I honestly have no idea what this means. I assume this meaning we're going to, for this mode, call some bit of code that Mission Pinball Framework already has inside of it. And I believe that's what it is. So there's already a, a Mission Pinball mode called Carousel. Like I think just like an internal inherent mode called Carousel, they've already included with the code that we get for free just by using it, Mission Pinball Framework. So this I believe is just saying, hey, by the way, for this mode, we're gonna be borrowing that code. It calls it out, MPF modes, Carousel, the code, Carousel, Carousel, it repeats itself a couple times. I don't pretend to understand all that syntax but I know that that is important. So we're going to leave it in and we're gonna continue. All right, and then we have mode settings. So there's some settings for the mode. I have not, this was not part of the tutorial. I've not played with mode settings before. So this is something new we're learning. Let's see what it says, see if we can figure it out. We have selectable items. I'm in a carousel. I'm going to have items I can choose from, right? Okay, it makes sense, my selectable items. Then what are they? Character one, character two, character three. This again is something we can just name them whatever we want. So for this example, they're doing a character selection. Okay, great. Um, select item events. So there's gonna be some events here for selecting an item. And what triggers that event? The start switch being made active. Okay, so this tells me when the start switch is active, so when you hit the start switch, that's going to select an item and it's going to trigger those select item events. I'm assuming it's gonna kind of call back to that carousel code we're borrowing from. Okay, but that tells me the way I'm going to select either character one, character two, or character three is by hitting the start button, okay? Which makes sense. The next item events and the previous item events, similar here, right? So if I 
hit my left flipper button, it's going to move from the character one to character two. It's gonna advance me to the next item in the carousel list. If I hit the right flipper button, it's gonna go backwards. Okay, I feel like that makes sense. Um, to do, add some slides. Okay, this example doesn't have any slides. There's nothing visual really going on here to show what's going on. So we're gonna to need to add that. We're gonna to need to add that so we can see our character one, two, and three on the screen. We'll come back to that. Um, Cause not really necess necessary right now, right? We could, we could do it invisibly. And then we have variable player. The variable player is something that I don't think it really touched on much in the tutorial either. Still really new to me and I don't really pretend to understand it all that much. Um, I read through the, through the documentation a little bit, right? We can look up variable player, we can read about it. And basically it says, this is uh, just like we have a show player, a slide player, an event player, where now we're gonna have a variable player. We're gonna play some variables. So what are these variables? Well, when the carousel character one is selected, so when that event happens, which again, I believe is borrow, borrowing from this carousel code we're borrowing from, right? So when we select an item, we hit the start button. If it's on the first item and we hit start button, so that character is selected, we're then going to create a variable called selected character. And that variable is gonna be a string variable, not an integer, so it's gonna be a string type. And this is what that string is, character one. We could rename this to whatever, right? We could call it, let's call it Bob Marley. Because we're gonna, oh, come on, let's be on theme, Steve. Let's call it Robert Plant. Okay, <laughs> all right, um, character two, John Bonham, all right. Um, oops, I actually spelled John wrong, he has an H, I always think it's the other way. Um, how about Jimmy Page, all right? There, we'll do, do a few of them, heck, let's, let's do, um, let's add in a fourth character, why not? All right, and then we got, John Paul Jones. <laughs> Character four up here. All right, and then I need to adjust this to say character four also. All right, so I'm gonna have four character options, right? Let's pretend you're choosing the band member that you wanna play as, right? Okay, so these are the four different variables that are being created, okay? That's all we have so far. So, is this gonna work? Let's see if this works. Let's save this out. Let's go back through and let's, let's run the game again. It comes up. I'm going to resize this again so I can see MPF monitor also. I wanna see the events firing. All right, we're in our attract sequence, right? Here's the attract slides going around. Let's hit start game and let's see what else has happened here. Oh, oh, I saw something. All right, I'm going to hit the um, Z is my left flipper button. Oh, look at that. You see that character two highlighted, that's something different. S flipper active character two highlighted. Still trying to eject the ball. Character three highlighted. Character four highlighted. Cycle around character one highlighted. Let's hit S to select. Carousel item selected, carousel selected one. Oh, and something crashed. Uh oh, what happened? But we saw some things, right? Okay, this for me was one of the first aha moments. I was messing around, didn't really know what was going on. I didn't really have MPF monitor open. And then all of a sudden I was like, well, let me open up MPF monitor. Let's see if my light shows are working. Let's see what's going on. And I started to notice the events. I'm like, oh wait, that's right. This shows me the events. Cause I was trying so hard to go through my code and see, all right. So there should be something about like a character one selected, but I wasn't seeing anything happening. Nothing really seemed to be going on. But I came back over here and my thing, oh look, carousel item selected, carousel character one selected. So something should have happened, right? Do I see selected character anywhere in here? So I don't see selected character. Oh, okay, the variable never really got thrown in there, but okay. So that's just gonna get stored. But I started seeing these events, which helped me start to, to piece things together so you're able to figure it out. So yeah, having the, um, having the monitor open here, so you can go through and see the events that are firing, this was hugely helpful because I'm starting to see other things that aren't inside this code that helps me understand what's going on here, right? So we couldn't see anything on screen, but when I hit the flipper button, it was, look, direction forwards. It was going through and highlighting things, right? Every time, so we highlighted things four different times here. So there's this highlighted code. All right, there's an event called highlighted going on. Cool, I didn't know it was doing that, but good to know, okay. We're gonna be able to use that. So when something is being highlighted, 
I'm gonna wanna have that be shown on the screen. And then when we selected something, selected character, we had carousel character one selected and then carousel item selected also happened. So a couple different events there were fired off. All right, so that's good to know. Okay, so what have we got so far? All right, the carousel, as simple as this, is working. All right, but we're not seeing anything on the screen whatsoever. Okay, so how do we put something on the screen so we can actually see it and better interact with it? Well, we're gonna add in a slide player, all right? So we're gonna switch now from this basic code and go through and show you the one that I went through and did. So I created a carousel. Instead of calling it carousel, I called it song selection because for me, it's I'm doing song selection, right? And inside my base mode, I called it start song selection mode. Okay, so that's the event it's listening for, start song selection mode, okay? Stop events, song selection item selected. So that was the other thing here. In our um, sample code, in fact, let's go back to carousel. In our sample code, it says a stop event is carousel item selected. Well, look at that. Once I selected it, carousel item selected. So that's gonna automatically stop that mode. Cool, all right? So the event is being triggered automatically by this code we're borrowing. When you go through and select an item, it automatically throws, it throws out that event, stops the mode. We're back to just base mode. We're all set, okay? So in mine, I renamed it to song selection item select because again, it's the name of the mode and my mode's called song selection. So if you name your mode something other than carousel, you're gonna need to update that also because the event is gonna be called, is gonna be prefixed by the name of your mode and then item selected, okay? And then everything else here, that code though, we're still borrowing the same code, that stays the same. I have my priority set at 120 here, okay, great. My selectable item, so I've got, instead of John Bonham and all, I've got song 01 through 010. Okay, I also have my select item be in the start button. I actually flip flop these around. The next item for me should be the right flipper button, not the left flipper button, so I reverse those. Right flipper moves it to the next item. Left flipper goes backwards, okay? And then variable player. Okay, I added a, a section in here. So the variable player, we had song selected one through three, just like we had character selected one through four. I went all the way down through 10, and I gave them the names of the songs I want it to be displaying, all right, or want it to be to be saving, right? So this selected song that has a variable, uh, babe, I'm gonna leave you, okay? Now I added this action set. I honestly don't think you need that. Like we just saw it working on the other bit of code. I don't know that this is actually needed whatsoever. But then I also added in here, I finally started seeing inside the event player um, over here, I saw this thing called highlighted. And I was like, oh wait, things are being highlighted. Okay, I can use that as part of my slide player. So when I just advance, it's highlighting the next one, right? So I advance to the next one, I want that to show up on the screen. Well, instead of it saying, you know, song three, song four, I want to say the actual name of it, okay? And so I'm also setting a variable called highlighted song, so I can display that highlighted song in my slideshow, okay? So what do we have after this? Then we've got our slide player. So I added in a slide player and When's the slide player gonna play? Well, when the mode song selection is starting, then this, um, the, this slide is gonna show up. I'm adding in the widgets. You should have learned this in your tutorial, right? Just like your attack, your attract sequence, right? Just like inside the attract sequence, um, we have, a, um, have a, um, a slide player with widgets. Now I've got a slide player, a text widget, and the text is gonna show, what do I want it to show? This is how you call a variable. You're gonna say player, because it's a player variable, all right? It's a variable for that player. Up top we have, um, it's for the player we're on, right? Okay, and then you do a pipe, that little vertical line, and then the name of the variable. Well, I want it to show the current highlighted song, okay? And so when the first song is highlighted, that variable is being called, babe, I'm gonna leave you. When the, I hit the right flipper button, the next one's highlighted, it changes to black dog. So this is going to automatically show its dynamic text. As that variable changes, it's gonna show that new one. It's gonna automatically show whatever that, whatever that name is of that song, okay? All right, number grouping, true. This is actually left over from selling something else. We're not doing any numbers, so I don't need number grouping. Font size, again, this is all subjective, right? For me, I want it showing in the middle. I want it 200, um, uh, size 200. Here's my bitmap font I'm using. Remember, we have a bitmap font video. We already talked about bitmap fonts. 
Um, I'm aligning it in the X and Y coordinates of where I want it to show up, okay? I've also got down below in the bottom left, my player, the number it's going on, um, score, next to the player is gonna be there, ball one, and then I've got my background image. So that's my whole slide player. Basically I copied and pasted from my, like from my base uh, mode, my base slide player, exactly what I did. So I want it to be ba basically the same slide as my base slide, but in the middle, I want it to be showing something else. So I created a different background image. Let me show you that. I've got this background image, okay? Which is for song selection, okay? And so it's got these arrows on the side. It says use flipper buttons to choose a song. And then in the middle of all this, it's going to actually show the name of the song. Ah, okay. All right. I hope this makes sense. If you follow along the tutorial and everything else, this hopefully should be making sense. We're just copy and pasting from the bass player slide. And then I adjusted a couple of things, right? Okay. So this is our song selection carousel config, all right? It's called song selection. So now I'm going to go back over to my main config. I'm actually going to be removing carousel because mine's not called carousel. And I'm going to uncomment my song selection mode. So now let's save. And now let's go through. So this is making sense. I hope it is. Let's walk back through the code one more time. Okay. I want my song selection mode to be called when I hit the start button to start a game. So it's looking for an event called start song selection mode. I need to make that event happen by going into my base mode and inside an event play, I'm going to play an event. When, when my mode base is started, I'm going to play an event called start song selection mode. So it's going to happen right away. Okay. And then that's going to start. Okay. It's going to stop when the name, name of my mode, song selection, gets an event that says item selected at the end. That happens automatically thanks to this code that we're calling that Mission Pinball Framework already has built into it, all right? The settings for this mode is, here's our list of selectable items. Here's a list of everything in the carousel that we want the player to choose from, okay? And there's like 10 of them, great. What are those things actually called? We go down here inside the variable player. Here's the variables we're going to play. We're gonna create some variables. Song selection, song 01, when it gets selected, that selected song is gonna be called, Babe, I'm gonna leave you, okay? That corresponds to the first, the first item here, right? Again, it's the name of the mode, song selection. The name of the item in the list, song one, and then selected. And we got that from that, from that sample code that it told us, right? Okay, selected. We know, same thing here, name of the mode, name of the item in the list, and then the word selected. So we just borrowed that same thing. My mode's called song selection, then it's the name of the song, and then selected. Okay, and then a selected song as opposed to selected character. Okay, because again, I'm using songs, not characters. So I can kind of call it whatever I want. That's the name of my variable. The variable is gonna be called selected song. It's gonna be a string, okay? So then inside my slide play, I'm gonna play a slide when, when this mode starts. It's gonna have a widget. It's gonna have a few widgets. They're gonna be text. Primary one is this one here, a text widget. And the text is gonna be Instead of just straight text, it's gonna be a variable, and it's gonna be a player variable with a pipe, and then the name of the variable, the highlighted song, with this font, and this size, this position. It's gonna have this background image. Mine's also gonna show up in the top right, you know, hey, you're on ball one, and then the bottom left is gonna say the player number, player one, and their score. Let's go through and play that and see what happens. All right, here's our track sequence. Our track sequence is going. Here's our list of um, caris or list of uh, events over here. I'm gonna resize this so we can see everything. Okay. All right, we're in the attract mode. Track slides are going, I'm gonna hit S. Oh, and I got a crash. What did I do wrong? Thought mine was set. Ah. Looks like I do need action set. So we're gonna go back and change all this to action set. Looks like we do need action set. See, we're learning something here on the fly, folks. Action set is, imp is important. All right, so let's go back and run it. There's my start sequence. Shrink it down so we can see it. 
Okay, my slides are going over here. Active, I hit S to start. Look at that. Babe, I'm gonna leave you. I hit the right flipper button. Cycling through, black dog. Look at that, cycling through them. Forward and backwards. Woo! And we see it over here, going over here, right? Highlighted song, highlighted song. Player highlighted a song. Song selection 06 highlighted, so it tells it that's what it is. Song selection 7 highlighted, boom. So it's telling it that's what that is, okay? And now if I hit S to select one, ramble on, bingo. It selected it. That mode selection is now over and we're ready to go through and it's trying to fire out the ball. Now, if you look in here, I, I've got the, I adjusted my bass slide to now show the name of the song here up top so it shows you what song you've selected, what song you're playing. Isn't that cool? Isn't that so slick? This looks like I know what I'm doing way more than what I actually did, all right, when I ran through this, guys. It took me so long to get to that point and figure it all out, but uh, at the end of the day, it's not that crazy. Okay. I hope that made sense. <laughs> um, for me, it was huge. Getting to that point where I could see it going through and doing it. Let's just do it full screen again. It just it looks so cool when you get to see it full screen. Turn the volume a little bit. All right. And so, do you want Babe, I'm going to leave you? Do you want Black Dog? Communication Breakdown? Good Times, Bad Times? Immigrant Songs? Do the Immigrant Song. You hit Select. Boom. Immigrant Song up here across the top. Ball one. We start hitting some targets. We start getting some points. Everything's adding up. Yes. I am very stoked about that. The next thing we need to do, so that is going through and just like showing songs, okay? We're, we're picking it, we're showing the songs, all right? But what we need to do now is how we need to tie that to um, actually starting a mode. So how do we do that? Well, we need to go through and create a mode for each one of those songs, all right? So I'm gonna create a file called song1yaml. I'm gonna go through inside my modes over here. Okay, I can get rid of this carousel mode, I'm not using that guy anymore. And I've got a mode for every song, song one through 10. I open them up, there's a config file or folder and inside that config file, inside that config folder is my, my song file for that mode, right? Song 01. So inside song 01, what's going to start this mode? What were our modes? Okay, so if we remember, if we go back over here to MPF monitor, song, look, I have song selection, song one selected. Remember that from over here? When the song gets selected, it's going to set this variable, okay? But this is also an event, so I can watch for that event. So if song one gets selected or song two, well, I'm going to say, so when song one gets selected, now not only are we setting that variable, okay, for that string, but I'm going to use that to then be the trigger for when this mode's going to start. So when that song gets selected, bam, we're going to start this mode on top of our base mode, okay? Stop events when the ball ends. For right now, we're going to keep it simple, right? It could be like when the song's done playing, when the timer runs out, after they made all the shots. Like we can configure how to end it. For right now, I'm keeping it simple. Just if the ball ends, if you drain the ball, the mode's going to end. We're going to keep it simple for that right now, right? Priority, I'll jump this up to like 1,000. Give me a little room in case there's other things in between this and base I want to add in. So I'm going to put it at 1,000, okay? And now I have a specific slide I want to play when we're in this mode, okay? So when this mode starts, I'm going to have a widget. I'm gonna have a timer, time left. We'll fill that out, I'm still kind of playing around with it. And then up here, the text, the player, and then selected song. Remember selected song? That was a, um, a variable that got set. Player selected song. Babe, I'm gonna leave you as the value. It's a player variable called selected song, okay? And so now it's gonna be able to play that at the top of the screen. Hey, this is the mode you're in. Boom, that's the name of the, of the song because that variable is associated with, right? So we play our whole slide player, and that's all I have right now. Then we can go through like base mode, and we can add into it, you know, do we want, you know, specific sound to play? We're gonna play a specific song when we start that mode. We're probably gonna wanna add that in, okay? Is there gonna be any specific shots, you know? Here's like, for the variable player, we're gonna play some variables in this mode. What are these different shots worth? Certain shots are gonna be worth certain points. We can start adding all that into this, um, into this, um, into the song mode. Right now, I just have it set to where you pick the song, 
It starts the mode, it shows the name of the song, and like, that's it. But we can add to it, right? It's all starting with baby steps, okay? Does that make sense, guys? For me, this was just like this huge aha moment in so many levels. It took me a minute. Um, hopefully it's easier for you, running through now and kind of seeing the final working thing. Um, it took me a minute to figure out how to add it into a slide player and actually show the right things. And I cannot, um, I cannot talk up enough how helpful it is to have MPF monitor running alongside your game window when you're trying to go through and iterate on code and do different modes because you get to see, okay, what's actually happening? What are the events that are firing? And I learned, oh, there's this highlighted event that happens. I didn't see that anywhere here inside the code. I didn't know there was a mode called, you know, character highlighted that I could leverage. But once I looked at the um, MPF monitor, the list of events, reading through all that helped me understand what the code was actually doing. So I knew better how I could fill in those gaps and say, okay, there's this highlighted event. I will use that to then set a variable that I can then play inside my slide player to show the right thing. Anyway, I'm repeating myself. That's all I have. That's the best I can go through and do and explain it. It's a long video, maybe a little bit wordy, but I, I hope you can like kind of watch this, follow along, start to follow along in the event player of your MPF monitor and kind of see what's happening. And you can set up your own carousel to go through and do your own mode selection and see how that will then trigger the mode they've selected by the event that it creates, which then you'll use. So much about modes and events, guys. I'm sorry. I hope this, hope this made sense. Many of you have been kind and said I'm a, I have, I'm a natural teacher, but man, I feel like I'm struggling in this video, <laughs> probably because I'm still just barely grasping it myself. But whew, at the end of the day, you can do this. Okay, I figured it out. You can figure it out. If you have questions, hit me up through Facebook Messenger in the comments down below. Whatever. Let me know what questions you have. If you're a fast customer, if you bought any of the fast hardware, um, jump, jo join into our Slack channel. I've seen several of you have. So we've got like, I don't know, a couple dozen more people that have jumped in over the last month or two and are playing around with their games. They're starting to figure it out. And there's a whole group of people willing to help you also. So there, yeah, there's lots of help available. The docs are very helpful. So between reading the docs, watching a couple of those videos, hopefully this video filled in a few gaps and then using MPF monitor, so you can kind of be paying attention and starting to learn and understand, oh, when I do this, this event fires. Okay, and seeing how you can, for me it was that mental leap of learning, okay, how can I, you know, um, watch for events in the code and how can I set events to happen in the code? I had no idea how to do that before I started doing all this. And I realized, okay, event player, oh, it plays events, just like the slide player plays slides. I tell it when this event should play and then what the event is called, Okay, now my other mode can watch for that event to then do something else. It's like kind of connecting those pieces, right? Has been huge for me. And anyway, giant aha moment. It was, it was so great to be able to go through and watch and see this actually like working and have the, have the name sliding through. It was, it was amazing, guys. I feel like this is one of the biggest, you know, nuts to crack for me. It's like, how do I even go through and figure out how they pick a mode? I have no idea. It was not that hard. Huge thank you to Brian Madden and Jan and Anthony and all the contributors to Mission Pinball Framework that have made it so easy to work with. The carousel code's like there. We just need to kind of understand how to tap into it and you can do it. All right, guys, that's it. Enough for me, I'm gonna sign off. Thank you so much for everybody who's been supporting me. We've got a couple of new Patreon supporters. Thank you, thank you so much. Hang around, do your three months. At the super jackpot level, you're gonna get your free t-shirt. You'll get stickers even at the base level for a few, for a few months and Guys, like you've paid for the respirator I'm using to be able to clear coat my play field. If it wasn't for you, I would have to shave my beard and I'd be dying in painful, harmful, carcinogenic fumes. So thank you so much. Um, really appreciate the support, guys. Um, yeah, just keep at it. If you haven't started building your own pinball machine yet, why not? You can do this one step at a time, building blocks like Legos. Let's just start with one thing, all right? And we'll get there step by step. Once you get this part figured out, it'll be even easier to do your next mode. It'll be even easier for the next one. Um, one of the guys in the Slack channel was saying, it's like, once you kind of do your first couple of modes, finish the tutorial and all that, there's actually kind of a lot of just kind of like copy and pasting. Oh, well, let me borrow the slide player from there and then just adjust a couple of things to be slightly different. And like, let me borrow that mode, that piece and adjust this slightly. And anyway, so I, I kind of feel like we're starting to get just a little bit of momentum. I'm not trying to get too much ahead of myself, but I'm feeling very optimistic that this is actually going to be possible to go through and code a game when I'm not a programmer. Um, so... If I can figure it out, you can too. All right, anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. 
Until next time, we'll hopefully I'll have a finally a clear-coated white wood. Ugh. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.